What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner. Earlier today, I made just a quick intro, um, little video about Joseph Biden, who decided to come off the bench. Uh, yeah, he's been sitting the bench because I guess some controversy popped up about him having some sticky fingers, you know, like to sniff people, rub their hair, caress them, pull them close, stuff like that. Uh, so Sleepy Joe decides to come off the bench and get into the, the race. Now, uh, I just kind of gave an overview earlier about some of the stupidity that came out of Joe's mouth. But I said to myself, self, you probably want to play this out loud and dissect it and break this down piece by piece, word for word, statement by statement, so that we can go ahead and uh, destroy Joe Biden's career for the third time. OK, first things first, why would you even risk destroying your whole legacy by running for president at about 102 years old. You already was the vice president. And if you lose, it ain't like losing to a regular person. People who lose to Donald Trump are losers for the rest of their lives. It's simple. He will never let it in. You will always be sleepy, Joe. Always be crooked, Hillary Clinton. It will follow you to the grave, Joe. You should have walked away with your reputation intact. Leave it alone. But see, what burns me up about this, Joe does what every other Democrat does. They don't come in talking about, hey, look at me. I'm special. That's why you should vote for me. He follows suit right with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton didn't get up talking about how great she was, how great her policies was. She simply got up all the time talking about how horrible Donald Trump is. Do you think that this commercial or info commercial is going to convince, first of all, all the people who voted for Trump that he's horrible. I mean, you didn't tell me why I should vote for you, though, Joe. That's the thing about this whole little infomercial. I'm thinking, OK, I've been hearing these narratives about Trump for the last two and a half years. So come up with something new. Wow me. Catch me off guard. Surprise me. Be an enigma for once. But no, the Democrats are never an anomaly. No, they're always predictable. So let's hear what Joe has to say. Charlottesville, Virginia, is home to the author of one of the great documents in human history. We know it by heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, okay. endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. We've heard it so often, it's almost a cliche, but it's who we are. We haven't always lived up to these ideals. Jefferson himself didn't, but we have never before walked away from them. Charlottesville is also home to a defining moment for this nation in the last few years. It was there in August of 2017 we saw Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis come out in the open. So now, what he's trying to do, first of all, is build his whole campaign around what? Charlottesville? First of all, 100, maybe 150 white nationalists showed up there, along with the ones that were bust in with uh, Antifa. Isn't it ironic that Antifa's bus and a bus full of quote unquote white nationalists pulls up together and all of them get off, walk nicely together right through the little barricade. Police let them in. No permit. Come on in. Walking in with masks, walking in with blow torches and baseball bats. But that doesn't look suspicious. They're there for peace. Peace for protesters. OK, isn't it a little suspicious that the governor or the mayor of that city or whatever he was, was told, told the police stand out. Don't interfere. Hmm. Don't you find that a little suspicious? But nonetheless, he wants to build his whole intro of his campaign around Charlottesville. He wants to create an image in our mind that we're still living through the civil rights era. These little clips. Yeah, you might as well just show some stuff from Alabama back in 1945 or something like that uh, where the Klan was out publicly. All right. But he wants to make us think that this is on a national scale. Now, how do we know? that this is not on a national scale. Well, few weeks, or I think it was a year after this, the anniversary, they were all supposed to posse up and meet in Washington and everybody was ready. All the cameras, there waiting. We're going to wait for all these white nationalists. Now remember, according to them, almost all Trump supporters are white nationalists. So we should all been there in full effect. How many showed up? About 20, 25. So little that the cameras, the, 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 the liberal media didn't even want to cover it. Yeah, let's go and find something else. What is that? The uh, anti-abortion people. And then Antifa shows up in greater numbers than the quote-unquote white nationalists 
and ended up beating up the cameramen for the liberal media. So I'm sure though, it, they must have mistaken them for white nationalists or Nazis or something because Antifa is just a peaceful protest group. So now this man is creating a false narrative to instill fear like this is Donald Trump's America. Look how far we've regressed. Their crazed faces, illuminated by torches, veins bulging, and bearing the fangs of racism, chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. And they were meant by Europe in the 30s. Now, uh, from my understanding, it was two groups in there. There was the white nationalists and the Klan. Let's talk about those two groups, first of all. First of all, the Klan, back in the day, we all know who they were under those sheets, weren't Republicans, they were Democrats, okay? Matter of fact, I believe it was Robert Byrd who somehow uh, repented of his wicked ways, even though there's no documentation of it, came out of the Klan. This man only died, what, 20 years ago? I don't know. But nonetheless, that wasn't that long ago, and they all praised him. We never heard him get up and give a testimony about his conversion. I was laying in my bed late at night and a bright light came through and hit me and I fell out the bed and bumped my head, start speaking in tongues, coming on a Honda, mm, how many writs and uh, ta 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 bow ta. And then after that, the Lord spoke and said, stop being a racist, stop being a KKK member and I've changed my way. No, we ain't hear nothing like that come out of Robert Byrd. But the Democratic Party loved him. But also, if you want to get to the Nazis and Hitler, when they were trying to organize their whole racist movement and being able to, to demonize the, the Jews and degrade them and make them look less than human so that it would justify all the crazy experiments and the killing of all the Jews, somebody who studied in America who was sitting around that table said, hey, wait a minute. We can't use that format because it's already been used. I know some people who has a, a pretty much a, a diagram of what we're talking about. Really? Who would that be? Oh, well, it would be the, the Democratic Party in those Jim Crow laws. I read them while I was in America. Yeah. yeah. You want me to get a copy of that? Sure. They brought that over there. They said, oh, this works for us. Let's just scratch out uh, slaves or black people and just put in Jews. That's all we need to do because this is ready to go. So, where did they get their little their little blueprint for all of that Nazism? Huh? Huh? I just, maybe he ain't studied that in history. Uh huh. Most people in America don't even know that. But let's continue because he's trying to make it seem like that's where we're, we're going. We're right back to Nazism. This group of Americans in a violent clash in Syria. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked Now, see, this makes me mad because it's unfortunate that that lady lost her life. And you know what? She didn't have to lose her life if the police was allowed to do the job, keep them separate, stop it from becoming violent, all of those things. Where were they? They were told to stand down. That's what happened. To this nation, he said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides. Now, would it that you know what? Candace Owens a couple weeks ago, when she was uh, up in Congress, and uh, whatever that that guy's name is, he ended up playing that clip. Let's hear what Candace has to say, and he played a little clip and didn't give the whole context. That's what Joe's doing. That's what the media does all the time with Trump. That's what the Democrats do. This right here is out of context. Okay. Trump condemned the white nationalists. But don't forget, there were groups of people there for different purposes. Man, but see, he don't want y'all to know that because he wants you to think Trump validated the white nationalists and made them equal with every, well, I mean, you got the Antifa, you got white nationalists, kind of the same thing. You know, quite as kept, they both was there for bad purposes, but the difference is one group wasn't even supposed to be there. No permit, nothing. Somebody just let him in the back door and said, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's let this escalate so we can one day sit back and say that was Trump and all this rhetoric that caused all that violence and uproaring. But there was a third group of people that wanted nothing to do with the white nationalists. They were there marching for freedom of speech and so on and so forth. But guess who attacked them? Antifa. Okay. 
Why do I know this? Because if you look at anything other than the fake news clips, go online, you'll see video footage of that group running up to the police saying, Antifa attacked me. And the police were saying, sorry, we ain't allowed to interfere. We've been told to step down. One of them was a black man. So was the black guy out there marching with the Klan and the white neo-Nazis? No. Was he marching with Antifa? No, because Antifa attacked him. So what group was he in? The third group. So there were some good people out there and Trump specified, okay, I know I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and stuff like that, but there were some groups of people out there. There was good people out there, but the media wanted to conflate the two just like they do with almost everything that he says. And now Joe Biden's doing it, okay? Instead of coming on TV saying, guess what? I'm Joe Biden. Here's some ideas for America. He comes on talking about some darn Charlottesville. But those words, the President of the United States assigned a moral equivalence between those spreading hate and those of the courage to stand against it. The and courage to stand against it. Is he referring to Antifa? The group that drags old people out of their cars at the stoplights, white kids talking to other white people, talking, you're just a white person, get out your car. Those guys, those guys that hit people in the head with locks and break windows and burn up stuff, are those those brave people, huh? Ones that walk around with their mask on, face covered, kind of remind me of the Klan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys that should be deemed a, uh, a, a, a domestic terrorist group, yeah, intimidating people, showing up, stopping people from talking, uh, all that stuff. These guys, is he talking about those brave people that decided I'm going to stand up against this? The ones that George Soros paid and bust all the way down there to start this whole mess? Are those the guys he's talking He can't be talking about them. Maybe he's referring to another group that we don't know about. But I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. What? what? I wrote at the time... Like... Maybe Joe's a little younger than we think then. Because he said, like, threat that we ain't never seen in his lifetime. Are, are you kidding me, Joe? I mean, maybe, what, Pearl Harbor was pretty bad. Vietnam was pretty bad. Uh, let's see, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, that was a pretty big threat. Pretty big threat. Yeah. Uh, how about terrorism and all that stuff, the attack, 9-11, all those things? Those were, no, this is, this is the biggest threat. Uh, what took place in Charlottesville, and then taking Trump's comments out of context and trying to imply that Trump somehow is a neo-Nazi, skinhead, white nationalist, Ku Klux Klan member. That's what, that's what, I guess that's what he's trying to imply here. That we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. The soul of the nation. Well, that's even more true today. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all the embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever... If we give him eight years in the White House, he may clean up some of this garbage that's going on around here. We may get some security at our border. We may mess around and get some good trade deals. Who knows? We may get some denuclearization of North Korea. Yeah, we may get even more lower unemployment. Huh? We may have more jobs come back to America that's already came back. Stock market just may even continue to go higher. You know, GDP might just be four point and above. Who knows? I mean, because right now everything is going this way when it comes down to Trump being in the office. So what are you trying to do, Joe? You're trying to reverse all that just because some people are supposed to be scared that Trump's in there and he's a racist, white nationalist, Nazi dictator. Is that what you're trying to do? So you want us to overlook all that progress? You want us to overlook a president for the first time getting in office trying to address serious problems like illegal immigration, all the other ones wink at it, kick the can down the road, talk a good game. We got to secure our borders one of these days. Yeah, but Trump gets in and he's doing that in, in odds to the Democrats, fake phony Russia collusion allegations, all of these stupid investigations, along with the media and so on and so forth. And he's still going to war for the American people. So now Joe wants to come in and compete against all that simply on racism. He's a bad guy. Don't vote for him. Vote for me. I'm Joe. Y'all know me. I was down with Obama. Y'all don't remember? I was standing right next to him. Yeah. I'm the one that told everybody he's not like the rest of those black guys. Look at me. He's actually clean cut. Look 
walking and he dresses well. This is a storybook situation. Most of them, they're walking around with the afros and the pics sticking out the back, you know, wearing their daishikis and stuff and their do-rags and the gold teeth, you know, earrings and stuff like that, listening to their Boogie boy music, boo 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 boo. Yeah, cars so loud sounds like a gorillas in the trunk trying to get out. Boom boom. Yeah, but he's not like the rest of them. He's a good black guy. Yeah, so look, I was down with him. Fundamentally, alter the character of this nation, who we are, and I cannot stand by and watch that happen. The core values of this nation are standing in the world, our very democracy. Everything that has made America, America is at stake. Yeah, it is at stake. Because if the Democrats get back in, everything that made America, America is going away. Because they don't like America. Thus the statement, America first. Make America great again. Thus the reason why trade deals are being negotiated that would benefit Americans. Thus us trying to secure the border so that people coming in will not hurt the American economy mess around, hurt American lives. All of these things that Trump is doing is for America. But I guess that's that's not, that's nothing to jump. No, none of that. The real important stuff is simply the perception of Donald Trump. Because see, I'm saying perception, perception of Donald Trump being a dictator and unrolling all of that success and progress and, 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 and goodness of America. He's tearing that apart unlike the Democratic Party, who everything about America, they despise. My candidacy for President of the United States. Folks, America's an idea. An idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone... Yeah, seeing subliminals is bigger and more powerful than any dictator. Are you referring to Donald Trump? The one who told us we need to keep our guns? That doesn't sound like a, a, a good dictator to me. Most dictators, first thing they do, get them guns. You mean Donald Trump, who sits back every day listening to people on TV talking about, I hate Donald Trump, he sucks, he's a racist, he's a white nationalist, he's a Nazi, he's a uh, traitor to his country, he's a Russian agent, he's the devil, he's Mussolini, he's Hitler, all wrapped up in one, throwing a little Stalin to sprinkle that in. Oh, you got some Attila the Hun? Let's get some of that. Get some Hannibal. Let's drop some of that in there. Some Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, no. What else are we missing? Some um, Son of Sam. There we go. Sprinkle that on him, too. Yet, at the same time, he just fights back with nothing but his words. Because last I checked, a dictator would drag all those people out the studio, screaming and kicking out into some big, fat, open uh, Sahara Desert somewhere and tell them to start digging ditches, or uh, if that, it could be worse. But none of, that's, none, none of that's ever happened. I don't understand. Where's the dictator coming from? I don't understand. Is, is, he, is he dragging American citizens out of their houses that don't agree with them and shooting them in the middle of the street? Last I checked, that's not happening. What is he talking about? Then he talks about uh, America is also uh, a, a beacon for, what is this crap, for everybody is he talking about the illegal immigrants? An idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees... Okay, now, are you sliding that in? Are you trying to say just because Donald Trump wants to tighten up our borders and make sure he knows who's coming in the country, that that's not giving hope to the most desperate people in, in, the, in the world? You know, I think that that's our right as a nation to decide who comes in, or at least to even know who comes in and out of our country. But this man, I guess, he's got to give hope to everybody. Yeah, oh, try that, Joe. Open up your nice big gates in your home and let everybody just come in talking about, you gave me hope. I watched your video today, and I was sitting there in the hood, broke, you know, a little crack going on in there with gunfire. I was scared. I'm scared. I said, I need some hope. I need to go to a place of refuge. And I said to myself, Joe Biden seems like a nice guy who wants to give hope to all the people. I'm going to go and I'm just going to live in his house. Okay? Because his house is better. And he's going to provide a better life for me. He don't need to know my name. I don't need to have an invite. I don't need to have paperwork. And if he tries to kick me out, I'm going to yell and say, I'm just an undocumented house owner. That's it. I'm just an undocumented homeowner. And if you don't let me stay here to get a better life, you're racist. That's what you are, Joe Biden. Everyone is treated with dignity. 
and gives hate no safe harbor. It instills in every person in this country the belief that no matter where you start in life, there's nothing you can achieve if you work at it. That's not what the Democrats' message is. The Democrats' message to all of us is you're behind the eight ball. If you're born black, you're disadvantaged. If you're born Latino, you're disadvantaged. If you're gay, you're disadvantaged. If you're a woman, you're disadvantaged. Nothing's equal. You're never given a fair opportunity. Ever. Ever. There's always somebody to keep you down because you're brown. Always going to have a foot in your back because you're black. That's our message. And if you don't believe that, then our whole campaign and strategy is over. Because then we got to rely on policies. And you know we don't. We don't have policies, none of that stuff. So guess what? We're going to make y'all think that no, you can't achieve anything because there's always this mysterious booger man standing over you, keeping you down. So what is Joe talking about? Uh, I haven't heard one Democrat get up there and actually live out this stuff. And he had the nerve to talk about where we don't have hate in our hearts. The Democrats specialize. They're hateologists. That's what they are. They specialize in making sure that every individual group has hate in their heart. That group hates you. And then oh, what they do, well, I hate them back. Yeah, that's what you should. And they tipped over to that group. That group over there hates you. They do. Well, I hate them back. Yeah, that's what they like. They like to see the division. Why do you think so many Americans hate the president? Where do you think these ideas came from? You think they just downloaded into their heads? What about all the false narratives that y'all been painting for the last two and a half years? You think that might have contributed to it? You think maybe that people can't walk around with MAGA hats on or a Trump shirt on or something like that without being attacked? You think that came from nowhere? Or could it be the years of reinforcing narratives that all Trump supporters are racist, sexist, white nationalists, xenophobes, anti-gay, anti-whatever? You think maybe that might have sunk in? to some of these people and brought about some animosity towards us? You think, babe? I'm just wondering. Leave. And above all else, that's what's at stake in this election. We can't forget what happened in Charlottesville. Even more important, we have to remember who we are. This is America. What? That's odd. You gotta be kidding me. Try to actually... Throw in some patriot statement at the end. After all, this is America. Doesn't seem like it to me, Joe. The rest of the people in your party, uh, they're up here talking about some socialism. Yeah, taking away our first, second amendments, letting prisoners vote. Uh, all of these stupid ideas. Don't sound like America to me. Uh, the people in your party hates America. People like Ilhan Omar, never been chastised, upset about the... The Somalia situation with Black Hawk Down hates that. Upset about the Jews. Upset about 9-11. Some people did something. And all of the people in the Democratic Party goes, I ain't hear nothing. Huh. That doesn't sound too American to me. That's all I'm saying, Joe. That's all I'm saying. So you can get up there and bluff all of the people who hate Trump so much that they, they buy that crap. Joe might do it. This might be our great hope. Go, Joe. Yo, Joe. But you ain't fooling me, Joe. You're not fooling me. Not to mention, in that whole monologue, you didn't say anything about what you're going to actually do to benefit and help us. Didn't talk about the economy. Didn't talk about border control. Didn't talk about any policies. All you did is got up there and say, Charlottesville, Ray, uh, orange man bad. That's pretty much it. And I'm going to take us back to the days of old when... People weren't scratching each other's eyeballs out because of the media dividing us and the Democrats and their identity politics dividing us. No, Joe, that's not what's going to happen. Um, you're going to get your face smashed in and I'm going to be there to laugh. That's if he makes it through the primary because his own party, many of them, the AOCs of the whole party, they're not feeling it. They don't want old Joe up in there. Yeah, they're doing everything right now to undermine him. And if he was smart, he would take his old butt, live out the rest of his career without taking that final L to either somebody in the primary or Donald Trump. He would be better off losing to Bernie or somebody else in the primary because if he loses to Trump, Trump's going to celebrate for the rest of his life. And Joe's last words on his deathbed, he's going to hear in his ear, I defeated sleepy Joe Biden, didn't I? That's what his last words are going to be. I can't. I got to take this into eternity, sleepy Joe. That's what I'm going to be forever. Anyway, 
Sorry it took so long, y'all. But Joe kind of made me mad. As I watched it, I was like, oh, no, nah, no, nah, see, I, I gave a quick, you know, breakdown, you know, outside. But I said, let me go ahead and dissect this a little more. Okay, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. Check me out every Wednesday, 7.30 live on uh, YouTube and on my blog talk show, radio blog talk show. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Um, check out Extreme Tees. If you like something, click on it. you get a 20% discount. Put my name in the promo code, Kevin. And if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, there's links in the bottom to do that. And um, find me on Facebook and on the Twitter. Links are down there, too. God bless you. See you next time in Kevin's Corner.